welcome. Hi, Malcolm. Hi, Mike and Yvonne. Hi, Vaughn. Nice to meet you. We got no video. I don't see any video. Can you hear us? Everybody hear us? Uh, Malcolm. Malcolm is, is on mute. Sound. Oh. Malcolm, I thought you were heading off uh, to places unknown, far reaching in the mountains. I think he's, he's there. Wait, next Sunday. Oh, oh next, next Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Just say, it looks yeah, like I, had to I had to teach this morning, so. Oh, wonderful. But uh, yeah, we're headed. We're headed off next next week. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we are just hosting this Zoom just for anybody that's curious about the African safari that we're doing in September and October. It's September twenty third through October third, and um, so we had add on excursions. Yeah, we have some add on excursion excursions. We also uh, did a Zoom the other night. Uh, where we shared a lot of information and we thought we should probably do this right. for the public. So if anybody had any questions and are thinking about maybe going to Africa someday, they might want to find out what it's all about. David, Sharon, Don, and I were, we're all veterans of Africa and I've been there. This will be my 11th time yep. going. Um, we've gone for both photographic safari, and then also work with the nonprofit organizations, clean water projects, documentary films, all those sets of things. So it's a balance between humanitarian and then just the pure joy of wildlife and cultural exchange. Yep. Sorry, we have a new puppy, so I <laughs> he's getting into some trouble. Um, he's all alone, which is pretty, if I put him in a crate, he's going to whine and cry, so. He's freshly minted. Anyways, One week we've had him. Yes, so Sharon and David, please introduce yourself. Would you go first? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, this is Sharon uh, LaBelle, who um, is my travel partner, and we've been Funny. traveling uh, quite a few places together um, with trips. Um and of course kenya is one of them then we met um bob at actually one of the the professional photography trade shows and hit it off together and you know he said hey i'm thinking about going and we said well yeah we're thinking about going and so it's like why don't we go together <laughs> yeah. so that's kind of how this came about about um so we're we're pretty excited um to uh you know be able to to hang out with each other while we're, you know, doing the safari. So yeah, so they have their own group and we have our own group and we're kind of just grouping together. Well, it's a great synergy, a lot of knowledge between us and experience between us. And you know, Don, I think it'd be great if you could share for people that it's not all about how big the camera is because mm -hmm. you love rocking the iPhone. I do. So I'm not a photographer, and most of the people that come on these trips and are she not doesn't like heavy. <laughs> are not professional <laughs> photographers. Uh, so um, I use mostly my iPhone and I get some pretty, pretty wonderful pictures, but I also have a little uh, M series, Canon M series power shot camera that has it, interchangeable lenses that I can use as well. Huh? Yeah, we're hearing somebody, but we're not quite hearing who's speaking. Eric? Eric, it's Eric. Huh? Eric, if you were trying to uh, pose a question, yeah. uh, you're coming in broken up. So you could put something in the chat if you want, or uh, try try and go again. Yeah, we can't see you, Eric, so we don't know if you're actually trying to speak. Oh. I'll just mute. I'll... <laughs> I muted Eric for now because I don't know if he has anything to say. If you do, Eric, please put something in raise the chat. So, yeah. You can raise your hand or pop it to chat. We have Mike and Yvonne here as well, and they are joining us. This is their first time on Zoom with us, and they're coming to Africa. Um, they just decided, oh, geez, I don't know, not even two weeks ago. So <laughs> welcome, 
Welcome, Mike and Yvonne. You get to yeah, experience. Your life has changed the last two weeks. <laughs> I know your life has changed a lot in the last two weeks. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, we're super excited. So excited. It's been on my bucket list. Want this type of thing, and just learning to work with a camera and with me being with these you people that are so amazing with what you do and getting to go with people that are experienced is just uh, kind of a dream come true. Well, wow. so this is your first trip there. This is your first time coming. Yeah. To yes, wow. it is. Okay. Um, they're they're world travelers, but it's their first time in Africa. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, oh, man, that's it, great. It's even fun. I don't know, David and Sharon, if you'd agree, <laughs> but it's fun going with people who it's their first time uh -huh. and seeing the reactions. And it's kind of like you get to relive that experience of the first time for <laughs> them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It never gets old. It, it never, never gets, gets old. old. No. And, and the reason yeah. it never gets old is because every day is different. You never yeah. know what yeah. you're going to expect because nature, you just don't know what's going to happen that day. It's not like going to the same destination spot and seeing the right. same buildings and the same, you know, ocean right. and the same trees every time. It's it's just really such an amazing experience. And this yeah. is you're having the multiple camps. I mean, yeah. it just opens up the the topography of the landscape we're going to see is going to be very very different yeah yeah the only thing that's kind of uh what what i enjoy is um for like uh mike and yvonne on on their first day they're going to shoot ten thousand images <laughs> <laughs> you do your eyeball will be buzzing oh my We'll probably do it with the camera off and we won't even realize it. <laughs> no, okay. that camera, you'll know. The the iPhone <laughs> that, no, we'll be, you know, we'll be that we've experienced, like Dawn is going, oh my God, is this amazing? And she and puts it I, down and it's her feet and then she pulls it back. <laughs> like when we were, saw the mama with the leopard and the cub. I know, I'm bad, I'm sorry. No, because she, <laughs> she's present in the moment, which is beautiful. Oh, she's like, I want to get this. And just I'll forget to hit record, yep. you know, stupid stuff like that. But that's what's fun. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and we've that's, been really that's blessed. Me. We've been really blessed with this trip. Canon has um, offered to supply people with uh, some equipment and lenses for the trip as a loan, um, uh, free of charge, right. and really, really nice. For people that use Canon. Mm hmm or, you know, they would love it if you had a Nikon and wanted to use Canon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? I have a Nikon. <laughs> do you have a Nikon? But, but I'll, I'd, I'd like to use a Canon. <laughs> and you will. Oh, right. And you will. I'm Nikon. You can stay with a Nikon. Okay. Yeah, no. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's whatever agrees with your creativity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So many good cameras. What I know the difference? Say it's whatever camera you have in your hand. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we always say that. Yeah. Uh, and, and the video and the images from a s iPhone these days is insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Malcolm and I were with um, Scott Bourne at uh, Bosque del Apache, where, near where Malcolm lives. And the quality, Scott has had some health issues. And he was just doing video and stills from his iPhone. And it was just amazing. Unbelievable. Beautiful, oh. beautiful. So I'd love to start this um, talking about like starting from. What do you want to roll the film they sent us? Okay, yeah, let's Open do that. Up. And then we'll talk about the itinerary yeah. and what to expect every step of the way. So I'm okay. going to share my screen. This this little short was um, produced by David and Sharon. So this, this top, let me pull this over. Come on. Oh, wait, I'll just go to two. That'll be Did two. you want to ask a question, too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This one. Share. Come on. Oh, there we go. It's thinking. It's the beach ball thing. Yep, it's thinking. Sometimes it takes a lot. <laughs> there we go. Can you see it, everybody? Not yet. Look at the background. Don't. That compass is obviously on the equator. <laughs> I don't hear any sound. Do you hear sound? No. Mm -mm. Okay, wait. Is everybody hearing it okay? No. 
No, okay. no sound. I'm hearing it. Okay, so I don't know how to make it play the sound. Can you see it? We can yes. see it. Yeah. Yes. Oh shoot. For screen sharing, I thought it would just play the sound. Now we're out of my league. I'm a still <laughs> <laughs> to You want me to try it from my screen? Yes. 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 Yeah. Go ahead. I'll throw it to you. It's not uh, share screen. I, I will, but I got it. Mitchell. <laughs> Let's see if it uh, Hold on. I gotta throw Sharon make oh, post. Okay. There we go. It's always fun. Share screen. Yep. You have it. Share screen. Okay. You can see when we notebook. You can nice fish. Look at the pretty fishies. <laughs> my uh, that's my other life. <laughs> <laughs> Underwater for diary or? Yes, yeah. Awesome. Let's see if this works. That's one thing we've not done. Mm -hmm. Did you hear it? I don't hear anything. I hear it on my end. Yeah, I know, I know. Crazy, we did too. Right? There's, I don't know how you share the system volume. Oh. Oh. It's on her. It's not us. She huh. has control. Well, good. Sure. It's not. It's not just us. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Oh, oh. I'm fine with the stills. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's You will see that. Oh. This guy we thought was going to jump in. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. That. Oh, great. They're running for their lives. They're the <laughs> McDonald's. Oh, this is McDonald's, huh? Yeah, because when they're running away, the black fur on their hind ends looks like an M. Like an M? That's a, everybody's happy meal, huh? Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Right. What's the movie, The Lion King? Yes. <laughs> wow. That's a super tester. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I think that's what I'm looking forward to seeing them both. The big freaking lions. Holy shit. There you go. There's a migration. Holy Christ. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to go first? Who's going to be the victim to the alligator? 
Oh my god. It's it's the crocodile, right? The croc. Holy, wait a minute. Oh, Jesus. Whoa. I, I just seen him at the end. That crocodile? What yes. Are, are they crocs or alligators? Doesn't matter, crocs. really. But... Now, Sharon, did you capture this from the hot air balloon? No, they're from the bank in the Jeep. Oh, wow. From the Jeep? Yeah. Yeah. These are all from the Jeep. Wow. Holy Christ. None of these are from the balloon. They might, let me, uh, nope. They're none, none of these are from the balloon. These are all from the Jeep. Wow. So that's, that was my hair piece. <laughs> some amazing pictures holy jeez <laughs> i mean as david said that, that, that's just a little tiny piece of the terabyte you know yes. more. i mean a, 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 a piece of sand of the, <laughs> uh, of the whole picture yes it's hard to pick out sometimes the ones you like the best because you oh you, sure you have a certain amount of time that you can put on a slide and you don't want to bore people and there's just so many that yeah. you're just, <sighs> Just blown away. Yeah, you wow. guys are, you're just going to enjoy this trip and so much. Share share about the camps. Okay. Um, Bob, uh, would you, you? Make, make me co-host. Make you co-host. Co-host. That way, if. Oh, wait, I have to take it back. How do I take it back? <laughs> yeah, you should always stay as host and then just make us co-host. Got it. That way, if anybody loses power, we don't lose the whole group. It'll revert to host or co-host. Huh. We good? No, Don. I'm, I'm trying okay. to figure out how to get right. Sharon not as co-host. Can you just stop? Actually, if you choose me, it'll bump her. Yeah, yeah. but it, yeah. it just is going. So to when chat. I when I click oh. on you, it says chat or pin. Oh, oh wait, um, Sharon, they made you oh, host. Oh, here, reclaim oh, host. I got it. Go. Okay, reclaim. And now, yep, and now we can. No, I came reclaim. out already. Okay. Yeah. Reclaim host. You're not host. And yep, there we go. Where's co-host? <clears throat> I don't see anything that says make co-host, so we're just gonna make you host. Well, hold on. Maybe it's under a different topic. Is it under you media? Go at the bottom and it says at uh, more. I think they're mm, share screen. Do you have host we're just gonna make you host for now so that we can move on? Okay. Make host. Okay. So you are you are the host, host right now, David. There we go. Okay, so hostess. Now I'm going to share my screen. Can everybody see where it says Lake Navasha? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So um don't worry about the days because I actually pulled this from last year, but this is um, where we'll be starting. Um, so Lake Navasha uh, is north of Nairobi. And it's going to be our first uh, safari. Um, yeah, she's from Medina. Uh, so this is actually what the rooms look like, what the camps look like. Uh, there are animals that do kind of walk through here. Um, huh? Cool thing about Lake uh, Navasha is we're we're gonna go out onto boats onto the lake, and uh, we have there's eagles that come down to grab the fish right at boat <laughs> level. So we're able to photograph mm -hmm. these massive birds coming down and um, grabbing the fish. So it's. Uh, it's a challenge, I'm telling you, to, to, even though we're shooting at a billion images a second, that's still a quite a challenge to, to uh, get that just right. So anyhow, this is where we will be starting. Well, actually, no, we're starting at the um, four points, and I have an image. Mm -hmm. Where do I have four points? You can't miss four points. It's the one that's the most. Yes. There it is. So here's going to be base camp. 
for you guys. It's a very nice contemporary hotel. Um, bar on the top floor, bar on the on the uh, first floor. Um, two different restaurants. So uh, very, very nice. They have a great spa also. Oh, there you go. I love that after a 20 hour uh, but yeah, they have a great spa. They have they have spas and all of the caps at half the price or a quarter of the price. Of course. Yeah, there. good to know. So um even though it's there, I would uh Wait. skip that one. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we start at excuse me, Navasha, and then we go to Ambaselli. Okay, can I ask uh, a question? Yes. What was what's the first? Okay, so the first day we're at four points. Is that what the Friday night or the Saturday night? So it's the twenty third. The twenty third. Yep, and we leave the morning of the twenty fourth for. Got the it. Night. Okay. Navasha. 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 No, Navasha. It's pronounced Navishi. Oh, is it really? Okay. Wow, Navishi. It's weird. So Navishi. Yeah. I'm gonna brush up on my spot here. Yes. <laughs> Jumbo. Jumbo. <laughs> this is Ambicelli is next. Ambicelli is known for their great herds of elephants. It's the, it's elephant paradise. Um, we're going to see elephants oh, okay. all along yeah. the trip, but what? we'll see it's the it's largest it's herds it's in Ambicelli. Um, so, uh, this image here of these two chairs and this table is actually taken right below the swimming pool is kind of right about right in front of these chairs. So this is the, you'll, you'll see this view every morning. And if you're up and choosing to have coffee here, you'll actually see the animals going right in front of this little water hole mm -hmm. down this way as it gets into, uh, Ambicelli. Wow. Um, John had a great experience on one of our excursions in Botswana. Very similar setup to this, and the pool was down below. And she, you know, was in between game Deep drives, guys. and the elephants came right up to the property edge, just ba walking even by. babies, yeah. like littlest little. She's like in the pool, huh? just leaning on the edge, looking over. <laughs> and like like you could practically up. touch them. Yes, it was it's, great. It's, it's like magic. Yeah, it cool. is. So we're in Ambicelli for a couple of days, and then we go here to Lions Bluff. For some reason, this is the one I'm most excited about. Yes, uh, yeah. just look at this place. It's oh, look at that! It's oh, with this, the just... white mosquito netting. I mean, it's so classically oh, beautiful. It's so gorgeous, and we're the only ones there. We have the entire have, yes. It's wonderful. All, it's all us. No one else except for the people oh. that work there. Wonderful. So beautiful. Um, yes. Mike, so, just don't walk around with any sandwiches in your pocket or anything. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Also, no food um, in your pockets. Rut roll. <laughs> <laughs> Lions Bluff is also um, where they have the hide. So this is where if you choose to go down into the hide and shoot at water level as the animals are coming in, this is um, the place that that happens. We um, actually have one more slot open for the the hide. If I know Malcolm, you're going twice. I believe Frank is going twice. I'm going once, Bob's going once. Mike and Yvonne are going once. Um, and so there's more, there's one more spot open. Just wanted to put that out there. Okay. And the hides are just a unique perspective because you are at eye level with the water. You're not looking down on the animals. And so you're seeing it from their perspective. And when they come into the water, it's, it's just, again, breathtaking. And when the elephants come in, they kind of take over the pool. Yeah. And you yeah. never know, and again, you never know what comes up. I know. You just sit and wait. And it's the most you're, you're incredible waiting. experience when you see in the distance a herd of elephants coming or giraffe 
giraffes will come. Or everything scatters and you're wondering, why did everything leave? Yes. And here comes a cat or a hyena. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just yeah. amazing. And to and watch so close. to so watch close. an elephant drink yeah. from the water hole is an experience and, all and you, in itself. And you hear the Yeah. But but it takes an <laughs> elephant, it takes an elephant oh, a quite a long time to spread its no, legs. No, 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 that's a giraffe. I'm sorry, a giraffe. <laughs> did I say <laughs> elephant? You did. Elephant on the brain. You did. Elephants are my favorite. But when a giraffe comes to take a drink of water at the watering hole, it's the coolest experience you will ever see because, because they're, um, they are skittish. Well, that's when they're most vulnerable. Right, when they're most vulnerable is when they're when down in the water. Down. Yeah. And so and so they'll they'll do this with their paws, like until they can get down, but something will freak them out and they'll stand back up. And so it's like this, is, <laughs> are they ever gonna get water? It's We had a wonderful uh, experience where this poor giraffe kept trying to get a drink and the birds would land on him and would freak him out and he would just literally like, jump that was all. A, that was a baby it was, giraffe. It was a young one, yeah. yeah. And it would just all four feet spring up <laughs> Just spook so much, and then finally, finally, <laughs> and then they drink for a long period of time. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I'd wow. like to welcome Anne. Just joined us. Oh, oh yeah, I go ahead, let her in. Yeah, I did, I did, but okay, you, you guys wouldn't have seen that, so it's fine. Okay, no, thank you. your host. Anne, so, welcome. Um, all right, so once we are, Lions Bluff is always kind of it, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it was always a challenge to to either you do Lion's Bluff last and then you you drive for a day and have to get back. Um, the cool thing is now they've opened up an airport between here and we can get back to the Mara. So this is why Lion's Bluff has actually opened up for this trip um, because we can now fly from Lion's Bluff over to the Mara. So how this happen works is our drivers will take our luggage and most of the stuff in the jeeps and leave ahead of time we will go ahead and um then you know do our safari and finish up uh and then we will actually take this uh the i call them bush planes but they they sit 15 or 20 people it's an hour flight, hour and a half, hour, hour and a half from. It's like Indiana Jones, right? We're in there with that's the chicken, that's you know. That's you know that's no steak in there, right? <laughs> I'm going to sleep. So <laughs> just, you know, you're just going to have your camera gear um, and just an overnighter, whatever you need to, uh, poetry and so on, and to wake up and get on the plane and fly over. So then we hit. You, but before you before you leave that, I wanted to mention that we need to make sure that everybody has a small bag that you can pack a night's clothing in, so that and you'll because your your bags will be packed and the guys will take it in the in the jeep and they'll head that eight hour trip, and so we'll need just whatever we're going to sleep in and wear the next day in that bag that we're going to take on the plane with us because your we can't brush. bring yeah our toothbrushes you know just the little stuff that we can. Overnight, an overnight bag. Yeah, and your camera gear. Yeah. yeah. And the total weight per person is 30 pounds. That's a lot, actually. Of gear. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, okay. also, yeah. So, I just wanted to mention that so that we didn't forget. Yeah. Okay. So, those we'll of us, so, those of us that are married at 60 pounds for the couple? <laughs> yes. 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 Absolutely. 30 pounds per person. <laughs> I don't know what Rob's going to do. He brings everything in oh the kitchen God, that, you, that man travels so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to start, we didn't mention this, but I wanted to bring this up too. Um, we're going to have uh, like a VIP service when you arrive at the airport. And Sharon, you can explain that. Sure. Um, when you arrive at the airport and you're deboarding the plane and you're walking down this long hallway and you'll get to your first stop, whether um, it's usually at a health check. And right after that, you'll give them your papers and forms and everything. And right after that, you will see someone with your name 
and they will take you there. It's a VIP airport service and they will take you directly through customs. So you don't have to stand in hopefully like, you know, an hour and a half line coming. Why you make it? Yes. yes. And so you will be taken off to the side and you'll be greeted by this person and taken directly out to baggage. And then once you gather your bags, then they will, uh, the hotel will be there. Our representative will be there from the hotel and they will be there to pick you up again with another name in hand. And then they will take you to the hotel, which is only about 10 minutes away. So okay. it's really nice advantage. So in case something's messed up with paperwork or whatever, you know, you, you can just kind of zip through there a little bit easier and not worry about a lot of stuff. So what if you're coming in like a day or two earlier? Then how's that all work? Same thing. You're still, same thing. You're still greeted. Oh. Doesn't matter oh. what time you're arriving. Uh, we have it all set up for for you guys to be greeted with the VIP service. Okay. Mike and Bob, about did you guys decide to do the pre tour? I for, I don't think you did. You're going to visit friends, right? Oh, we haven't. We haven't decided. We're not sure if they're going to be around. We haven't even told them we're coming yet. Okay. And so we the haven't planned it all. Okay, uh, Sharon, if you could explain the pre-tour to them really quick, that would be great as well. Sure. Uh, the pre-tour is on Saturday, and uh, one of our safari drivers will pick it's you up at 9 o'clock. The 23rd. The 23rd. On the 23rd, Saturday mm -hmm. the 23rd. And uh, take you to, the, to Karen, the city of Karen, which a lot of you may have heard about it from out of Africa. Karen Blixen pretty much put the city of Nairobi on the map, and then they named the city of Karen after her. So you will actually go to her coffee plantation and home. This is her actual home where uh, her and Mr. Blix and whatever his name was, I always forgot, I have to watch out of Africa again. So um, you will uh, get to see that and tour it. And it's it's absolutely amaz amazing, really nice uh, uh, touch to getting the feel of you know, Africa. Being in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, you'll go to uh, the Giraffe Center, which you'll get to actually walk and feed and touch all these great uh, Rothschild and um, uh, uh, giraffes. I think they're all Rothschild there. I'm not for sure. Are, are they the uh, reticulate? Yeah. There could be two. There. So probably yeah. the reticulate and the Rothschild. Um, I mean, when she uh, says you get to touch them, you get to feed them. They, they will lick in, your face. They will lick your face and leave you dripping with <laughs> slime. I mean, <laughs> it's so like sort of compared to. I'm oh, sorry. It's the Is this most like to Giraffe Manor. Like, yes. yes, Giraffe yes. Manor. Oh, really? Yeah, you can see Giraffe Manor right behind it. You know. And okay. you, you used to could go there to visit, but now you have to stay at Giraffe Manor in order to actually. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, this sounds good. Uh, so you get the same effect. It's a beautiful place, but you yeah. can actually. Yeah, she it. wants to do that. She <laughs> the ramp. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, we're gonna do that. Let's see if we'll get your yeah, friends on the way out. Have the giraffe head come in through the uh, patio door, the French doors, and you know they're right over your shoulder. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they yeah. be careful because they can. Bam, you yep. know, no, it's yeah. true. But yeah. they'll, 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 I mean, sometimes when we were there last with our kids, they came in through this window and they, like, I was in between them and they crisscrossed. Her and they were her eating. Head. It was just the most amazing. I was like, ah. <laughs> it's so amazing. <laughs> That's and great. Their tongues are yeah. long as their neck. Yeah, as the tongue yeah. comes yeah. out. Yeah. Right. And you don't want to be touched by them. <laughs> it's very sticky. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we don't get there until the late, uh, what, 20, uh, the Friday night? Mm -hmm. Later, you or sometime Friday afternoon, yeah, maybe twenty five. Yeah, oh, that's not that bad. This take this okay. takes place on Saturday on the twenty third. No. This so is okay. twenty third. If you decide you want to go, you're good. You, we just go decided we are we're gonna go. Okay, awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're going. You won't regret it. And then and then the drivers take you to Talisman. Which Talisman, there was a he was a famous photographer, and they turned his home into this really, really nice uh restaurant. So it's very eclectic. Oh. The food is extremely nice. It's got all kinds there. Uh, you know, people get reservations years in advance to get there. So it's really nice touch to to sit down and have lunch after that, wash oh. your face. And Sounds then lovely. <laughs> it is. 
And after that, you go to the Natural History Museum where you can see the Man of Cradle. They do a walkthrough with you to give you all the history of Kenya. And David's favorite place is on the second floor where there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birds that Africa is home to. And you, you will see these birds throughout the safari. You will not believe how many birds there are. And, and I know we always have a contest to see how many birds you can shoot, how many different birds you get to photograph. And so we I think Dora, David's partner, she's up to like a hundred and one or something. Wow. One single safari. That's and how many different Dora. species she's <laughs> and, and you know it's <laughs> funny because I'm not really much of a bird person, but when you're in Africa, these birds are gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. The variety and the, and the colors. The behaviors and of them and the stories behind them. It's just Yes, yes, it's amazing. What's the bird birds did you get on that? Every time I hear the guide, I swear they're calling it a bastard. A, <laughs> a bastard that it's a big bird and it stomps. Stomp. Yeah. And it, it stomps like the dung beetles and eats them. But this yeah. is huge and you see it running around going bam, 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 and it's just yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's amazing. And, and you'll get to see dung beetles. Oh, it's yeah. really fun. <laughs> I like dung beetles, do you? Dumb beetles? No, they land on the D-U-N-G. They actually do go into the elephant poop and take out a chunk and roll it and roll it. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. They carry the back to their tribe. It's really interesting. You only watch National Geographic. But Be anyway, careful. it's a wonderful day. It's a great day to break you in, to get to see what Nairobi's about and get some really firsthand history, you know, yeah. of, of Kenya. So it's worth your day. And, oh, and it sounds you're, fascinating. You're finished about four o'clock. So you have time to go back for a swim and naps, you know, whatever. Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. And don't forget, Sharon, um, we want to do Sheldricks on the 22nd. So, yes, I already uh, sent a, a note in to okay, see thank you. if we can get you a reservation. Yeah, I was, was going to email them as well, but I didn't oh, want to. Good. Them. Yeah, let okay. well, that's a baby elephant. You're not going to be there. No, don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll, yeah. see, you'll see baby. Oh, yes. You'll see, you'll see baby, pretty much baby everything. Yeah. <laughs> the zebras are my favorite. <laughs> are, really? Are they really? The yeah. elephants are my favorite. Oh, those babies. Oh, but every baby, yeah. everything you see. Oh my every God. Every baby is cute, no matter what. Yes. Breathtaking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, David, sorry that we totally okay. liked your no show. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the, the last camp of the trip, the Mara uh, Bush Camp, the private wing. Um, this is probably the highlight. Well, for me, it's my, my favorite place. Um, this camp is built kind of on a little peninsula that you're this this actually there's a small river here that goes around the camp and um, there's hippos in here. There are hippos. Yeah, we are going to see hippos. Hippos <laughs> all night long. Um, you'll hear hyenas. You'll hear elephants. You'll hear lions in the morning. Um, it, it's it. it it's, it's so cool. Amazing the sounds that you'll yeah. get from here. <laughs> um, you're, cool. you're gonna be you'll hear this <clears throat> like this sound like this, like it's like this real grunty throat sound, and you'll just be like, What is that? You know, yeah. and <laughs> it, it's a hippo swishing right there in the water. You walk out of wow. the and it's they're right there. So yeah. we came in from Safari and we're getting ready for dinner and Sharon oh. fell asleep on this couch right here. <laughs> we had to go wake her up, tell her it's time to eat. <laughs> and you guys That's easy to do because we all get up at 5 a.m. every day. Oh, yeah. my. And you're out to eat and, you know. I hope the coffee's strong. It's, oh, so, it's so good. good. It's it so is. good. Yeah. Cool and I'm not a coffee about... drinker and I drink coffee every day there. Like three <laughs> I love coffee. So it's paradise. the cool thing about the Mara Bush Camp um is there's no fence around it and they have uh they have guards um that are actually positioned between each of the the houses um just to uh 
you know, for protection. So this from the hippos, camp, right? This, pardon me? From the hippos, mostly, right? Yeah, mostly it's the hippos because yeah. the elephant. Okay. <laughs> I got up last time and uh, in the morning, the, the guard said, Did you hear that elephant last night? And I said, What are you talking about? He goes, The elephant <laughs> walked right by your tent and then your light came on. And it's like, No, I'm an old guy. I just had to pee. We, we do that. <laughs> <laughs> Miss the elephant. <laughs> So you'll never hear the elephants, but I the hippos, that. Yeah. The hippos go point. through there like a bulldozer. They just, yeah. they don't care what's in their way. They just, Rrr. so they, yeah. they're the ones that make all the noise. Yeah. This camp is in the middle of the Mara. It's so, in the bush. That's why it's, it's called bush. bush. Yeah. Yeah. So the cool yeah. thing is when we get up to go do um, the safari, we're already right there in the middle of it. Now, for most people, their first time to come and do a um, safari in Kenya, they'll think that they're going to see the Masai Mara, but they're actually staying outside of the reserve. So they have to get in the Jeep, get in line, wait for the reserve to open up, and then get it all the way over to where the migration is happening. And typically, we're done shooting. We're coming home as all those vehicles are coming in going, you guys yeah. missed it. <laughs> <laughs> you were at the wrong, you went with the yeah. wrong people. <laughs> so um, this is a really, really special place. Yeah. Um, I love it. There's, any, no, there's anytime, no other place like it. Anytime yeah. you go on safari, you want to go private. You never want to go to Kruger National Park where they uh, bring busloads of people on and it's, it, open, to the it's open to the public. It, it's really camp. wonderful to do yeah. private camps. This is just stuff. really a private thing. Mm -hmm. yes. wow. yeah. All right. Um, so talking. food. A lot of people like this. What's there to oh. eat? You will gain weight. Yes, very oh. easily. <laughs> very easily. I'm it going on so a good. diet now. <laughs> I know. I, I hear you. I agree. I'm I agree. Now. And from past experience, yes. I have to share with you, Sharon, my uh, dietary restrictions. I've got some food sensitivity issues, but I've never had a problem in Africa. Yeah. But I do well, need to share because that. Because they with do you. have. Yeah. yeah. So everybody yeah. puts yeah. that in and they will they will know you by your food sensitivity. Perfect. Um, <laughs> so uh and they're very, very good about it. Uh so yeah, don't worry. You're you're still gonna be very well fed. Um Food is oh my great. God, food is this is the actual, um, this is what our vehicles look like. So there's actually four rows in here. Wow. Um, the so windows um, roll up. Mm -hmm. So you have this complete open space to shoot out of. The top comes up so you can shoot at this level or you can stand up and shoot at the top level. Mm -hmm. There's bean bags all the way around, top and bottom, and you're gonna be resting your cameras on bean bags. There's no need for tripods. Don't bring a tripod, you're not gonna use it. Um, unless you're gonna do a night shot. Yes, unless but I, I, I just been using uh, the platy plate instead of bringing a tripod. Yeah, but not everybody has a platy pot plate. It's just more comp. You don't have to carry a tripod then. It's right. just a flat plate. You know, you put a head on it. And it's very and convenient. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. Later. In the Facebook group and yep. those kinds of things. Okay. So, and I did notice um, with the vehicles too, each seat has power. So you need to charge your phone. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Perfect. Um, more food. <laughs> so the chefs, the chefs are really amazing. It's um, so the food is to, is to die. It's just so good. And, and Don, whether you're whether you have particular like I have an allergy, food allergy, so they're very particular. Uh, okay. If you're vegan, if you're pest, whatever it is that you only yes. they take care of all of it. There is awesome. such a variety of food. You yeah. won't. You, you'll wonderful. Agree. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, I'm okay. not worried about it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's, David, just share like at that last scene where the vehicles were in the shot. Yes, that's out, right? 
we're out. This is out on the Mara. Right. Yes. Right. yes. Yep. And, and um, so we are lunch. Yeah. Well, there's con yeah. This is either lunch or or breakfast. a late yeah. breakfast. Right. Yes. Yeah. Can you talk um, about the sundowners? Yes. So yeah, we, we will sundowners. we will arrange a sundowner, um, and it's not a downer. It's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> So right. the sun downer yeah. means we're going to watch the sun go down. Oh. And to make yeah. it go down a little easier, we have this neck oil. It's here available for us. Um, it's very, 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 and that's before dinner. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is a happy hour. Yes, yes. It's happy hour out on the game reserve. <laughs> in the wild. In the wild. Like you, they just find a spot to pull over that they know is safe and and we all get to just hang out and it, talk about our day and and then drive back to camp and have dinner and go to bed and start it again in the morning. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> so this is a great I mean, a great sunset uh for us. This this PDF, I I don't remember did it seems familiar. Did you share this with us, Bob, or did no. this come out? At, or if it didn't, we, can we did a similar uh, Zoom a while back, Malcolm, and we were doing from a PDF like this. But it yes. wasn't this one, right? It was similar. Mm -hmm. Can you share that with us, David? Um, sure, I yeah. can. It's it's not in order, and I've just put the. I just went over the part of it for that, that, that's our part of our journey. Yeah. Just, yeah. Right. So um so again, we're gonna be at the uh the Mara Bush camp. We'll be at I call the Savo because it's part of the Savo area, but it's called Lions Bluff mm -hmm. and Ambaselli. And I can't say this one, Navisha. But I would say not Nish, Nish, how is it? Navishi. Navisha. 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 Go turn this off. Do you want to uh, reclaim host? Sure. Sure. Thank you, David. Oh, you're welcome. And remember, yeah, things, nice. are, things are simple there. There is nothing fancy. It's all casual. Even in the five star hotels, the ho the you know restaurants, wherever, everything is very casual. And you don't have to pack a whole lot. We yeah. normally pack about four changes of clothes and mix and match. You know, mornings will be cool. Afternoons will be late. Evenings will be cool. So make sure you layer and have you know those things. What's cold? What's cold? Sixty. Yeah, oh. it's not too too cold, but it's cold enough you're gonna want a jacket. Sometimes I bring a blanket with me. <laughs> okay. So what's warm then? What's hot uh, about that warm time? Yeah, I mean, warm seventy five eighty sometimes. It, oh, okay. It's, oh, okay, it's not cool. Yeah, it's. It's not, it's, you know, like we were telling you guys at dinner that it, um, you can zip off, those zip pants. off, like the zip off. Bob always brings those zip off pants, pants that he can turn into shorts. But what's, yeah. so when we've gone in the past, we've been in complete open mm -hmm. vehicles, kind of stadium seating. So you're very exposed to, to everything, to no top. So right. that's why you're colder. In these vehicles, if you're feeling cold while you're driving out to, a location to uh, see animals, you, you could can roll down your window, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's you're you're uh, more protected from the elements than a totally open vehicle. That is correct. Yeah. What about colors? Are is there any color restrictions on in the clothing? It's just muted, you know, like light, like a light pastel or greens, beiges, it, camo's fine too, you know, things like that. So okay, they tell you to stay away from whites because yeah. the bugs are attracted to white. Okay. Um, having said that, I have two safari shirts that are white. <laughs> yeah. But I layer so, my white shirt just so I have that 
collar, you know, to put mm -hmm. it around. Mm -hmm. I just but layer I it what's, another what's shirt. really important is what's called a buff. Yep. And oh, yeah. I was just going to mention that. A buff. You need a buff. You need a buff. Uh, you'll need that's that. a buff. What's it's a buff? This, it's kind of like a scarf that grows on your neck that you can pull up. We all look like we're going to go rob a 7 Eleven when we have. <laughs> I know exactly what it is now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they're very thin. They're not like super thick and in, in, in like winter like. They we, just, they're good for dust storms. Yeah. They're good for. Um, yeah, I know exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Very great. Material. Well, you can get them at the gift shop if you don't need well, yeah, all kinds of them. Yeah, we've got. And they're, they're like a solid thing. So you stick it on yeah. over your head. You can okay. Wear, you can wear it, you know, to pull your hair up. That kind yeah, of thing. pull your hair back, put it around your neck, you know, face, neck. Mm -hmm. Perfect. They're you even to have your warm, uh, you wet it and put it around your neck. Is it oh, all yeah. the COVID stuff that you weren't supposed to be wearing because it wasn't protective? Correct. Enough? Yeah. Correct. Yes, exactly. I mean, basic, basically, that's... Yes, exactly. <laughs> Just okay. keep the dust out. They're not K95. N95. Oh, sorry, N95. K95. <laughs> K95. Hey, I know what you mean. Whatever. <laughs> we know what you mean. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, On the Jeep. Yeah. You're going to want to wear closed toed shoes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, tennis shoes is fine. Around the camps, you can wear whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. I usually wear like a light pair of uh, hiking boots. Okay. Yeah. Hey, is there anything like fire ants out there? Like, you know, down south in the Gulf Coast, got all these fire ants. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm known to step in them. Uh, they fire them? ants? No. Not no, okay. <laughs> we have seen ants. We've seen a train of ants before, but you know, you're not going to okay, be. Don't go, don't, go, don't, don't go poking them. <laughs> and don't sit on the termite mound. You know? yeah, yeah, right. Right. There are those. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like skyscrapers, right? Yeah. Right. It can be, yeah. Yeah, just don't bother them. They don't bother you. One mm. thing I do suggest for the ladies, or maybe guys too. I, I bring like a little Ziploc baggie with extra toilet paper or tissue or something. Oh, like yeah, that. that's a good one to, to address the, the bathroom situation while you're on safari, out on game. There's no, there's no bathrooms out there where we're driving for the day, mm -hmm. but they will stop. They will, the driver, our guides will get out. They will take us to a safe place. Uh, we use the girls, we usually do two at a time. So you're doing your thing and the other person's watching, you know, uh, okay. watching you, but watching. Yeah, <laughs> sure. you know. come on. Hey, we're going to no. You, you got to get good at squatting and peeing. Exactly. Okay. You're, you're, you got your back towards them. John had this maneuver holding on to the rail of the push guard. Yeah, well, yeah, we won't talk about that. <laughs> I discovered that the back of every Jeep has a bumper. Yep. So it's the perfect place for my bum to get the bumper and just mm -hmm. let it go. <laughs> That's what he was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, it's raised up high, they can't see anything. So and I don't have to squat down as far. Right, right, because you can hold on. <laughs> Something's coming. Yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm halfway body. there. <laughs> Don't be on the termite mound. Mike's bringing a porta potty. That when he was younger, <laughs> to aggravate the Porta potty for a safari. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> they do make those little fold out stands with a toilet seat. Yeah. Put a bag. Yeah, it's all about comfort, man. The last time, the last time we were on safari, we were with two vehicles. We had just kind of met up. And I said, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. And so they said, oh, no, it wasn't two vehicles. It was just us. And and so he says, OK, he pulled over and he let me go in this spot. And and all the guys went the other direction. And I'm peeing over here. And as I'm peeing, another vehicle was pulling up. And I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't, and then all the guys come running because they think something bad is happening. And I'm like, I'm trying. It was funny. Yes. No <laughs> trees out there or what? You thought no? it was a snake or something. I don't know. <laughs> there are trees. There's, there's, but... there's bushes. You're safer <laughs> in an true. open space than yeah. you yeah. are by a tree or a bush. Because oh, you're so much lurking out there. 
You yeah. guys, it's weird at the very first time, and then afterwards, you're like, "What? I gotta pee. I gotta Just go. pull over." I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. After, after the first time, it's yeah. like, and yeah, you yeah. see everybody else is doing it. You're like, "Okay, this is no big go deal." Go for it. Yeah, just go for it. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's good. That's I sure will be fine. Yes. I'm really glad that you gave the okay on that, though, because I've been really yeah. worried about Oh, yeah, that. nobody's expected to hold it for the whole Oh, long. my goodness. <laughs> Especially um, me, I have to be a lot. Well, once I'm in Canada. No. <laughs> <laughs> and there there's was water there. always in the Jeeps. Every Jeep has water. We keep them in the back. So, and okay. then... Um, um, I don't, we removing the we're taking the coolers out, right, David? The coolers yeah. and the because it's just yeah, never it's used much room. You want to have more room to move around. So, um, okay. I don't know if they'll be completely out, but <clears throat> and sometimes I don't know. Maybe we might have a couple of the jeeps that have the fold down door, but those are at discretions of the driver are, are to, you know, where will you well, there, and one good there. thing too, you guys is we're going to have the same guides throughout the entire trip, the same drivers through the entire trip. So we won't have different guides at each camp, mm -hmm. which is nice. It has been nice. Okay. It has a continuity to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have, the guides are like top ranked. They're people. <laughs> David the guides are the most important thing. Well, they, uh, in, in our opinion, they make your trip. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Besides us four, we make Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we forgot about that part. <laughs> are like, like, oh, my gosh. They know. They're photographers themselves. They have gone through uh, a tremendous uh, training to be a guide. And it's, it's a very prestigious job in Africa yeah. to have that particular job. Right. And uh, you know they'll they'll become family when you leave. Yeah. You know? and, oh. and you can't we can't. One of the things I wanted, like I begged our driver when when I was sharing the story with you, Mike and Yvonne, when the uh, baby giraffe was just born and the boy cheetahs, the mama was trying to teach the boy cheetahs and they were trying to go after this baby giraffe. I was bawling my eyes out and I was begging our guy, please, quietly bawling my eyes out, of course, but begging him to just like stop it stop it he's like i can't do that i took an oath it's nature you have to let nature play its course and i was like oh my god yeah. it's a lot of things are going to be you know not the yeah. easiest thing to see you know we can't guarantee that anything is going to happen a kill or um any you know but Chase the kill you, you, or... you really are lucky if you get to see a kill it's it's pretty as hard as it is it's pretty incredible to see that in person yeah. To yeah, see yeah. lions mating in person is, is another really beautiful thing to see. Yes. Oh, it happened, yeah. Did we oh, lose that? There we go. Hopefully. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. There it is. Yeah, like Don was yeah. sharing. Jesus. You never know yeah. what you're going to come upon. I like breasted roller. Those are my favorite birds ever. Yeah. And, and I love story so there's a story that i heard about the lilac breasted roller it's not a true story but something about the wings and the in the tail and if the tail falls off they'll I, I i i'd have to look it up it was really amazing they're the most photographed bird in africa yeah because they're so gorgeous oh wow yeah you just never know you never know what you're going to come across there was one time we were out we were coming in it was like uh, the, we had our sundowner. It was pitch black out. They drive the vehicles with these big spotlights for the see the road, and we came across a herd. Uh, I'm sorry, a uh, uh, a lion and family. Uh, so uh, babies and bunch of bunch of uh, female lions and one male lion, and a, uh, it was incredible. So we sat there and we watched it for like 45 mm -hmm. minutes, just sitting there. This one? No, no. This was our first trip with oh. Katie. Uh, into South. This is in South Africa, and and both vehicles were sitting there for like forty five minutes because we were going back. We were heading back to camp. We were about a mile away from camp, and one of the vehicles died. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. And so they had to. Our we had to transfer everybody out of that vehicle into in front of this in front of the 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 what do you call the family the of pride. Lions, the pride. And we had to do it like, you know, like one toe at a time. And it was the oh most fun 
And then they had to drive that vehicle back to camp and then come back with another vehicle and pick up the rest of the people. It was just- And it never phased the lines. And I no. never once felt no. threatened at all. Never. You know, the lines are just sitting there doing what they do and they're at night and looking around. And I'm not- telling you, they were like 15 feet away from they us. They were. Because wow. when the cool. vehicle stopped and the engine was off and we were there for so long, they just go about their business and they happen to just move closer and closer. And- yep. Oh, you know, sometimes the little cubs will run up and bite the tires, you know, and then mom and dad got to come and for moms, usually the hyenas moms, do that too. The hyenas yeah. do that too. Just fun, you guys. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> My heart is already beating. <laughs> um, <laughs> right now. <laughs> just, I'll, I'll throw this back over really quick. Um, this is a view. So, From the watering so, hole. Right. Switching. And then when the herd comes in, the babies, they'll all like the teenagers are the best elephants ever because they're the most, they get in the most trouble. And so they'll, 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 and you'll hear the matriarchs yelling at them and taking their, their trunks and slapping them. And, and then the babies, will, the babies don't know what to do with their trunk oh, and they're figuring out how to drink water. The babies don't know what to do with all so of it. Right. right? And so they'll, they'll fall face first in the, in the watering hole. <laughs> and then they'll, then they'll, then they'll all go in and take baths. It's just, oh, it's so wonderful. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, it really is an amazing experience. Um, the more the hippos, so. you know, they're just these submarines that just pop up. You don't know <laughs> they can be, and all of a sudden they they like pop out of the water. Mm-hmm. So we'll actually see hippos then. Show the night shot. Yes, at the one camp there is hippos. In the in the bush camp, right? The bush camp yes. will have hippos. That's the, what I was saying about the tripod. Bob takes usually does a shot like this one evening. Uh, he'll, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, because it it really is that clear. You look up to the sky <laughs> and you sh- see creation because you see this because it's so dark. And just the amount of stars that you see is just overwhelming. There's no light pollution. Oh, wow. Holy crap. No. Yeah, no. No. Beautiful. Right? And so he'll put a camera on a tripod and it's a... Um, it's a what? I don't know the word. Yeah, look at for it. How long you have that on, on... Oh, it's a 30 second exposure. Yeah. Yeah, you just put it on a delayed timer if you want. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, I mean, jackals are everywhere. Yeah, that's what I call it. They kind of follow along trying to get the scraps of any of the big predators. And they're that's a jackal? That's a jackal. They're quite spunky and brazen on how they'll go up and taunt all hyena, anything. Lions, yes. cheetahs, everything. Mm-hmm. Very fast. And they're little. Yeah, they are little. The black but they're pretty black. pretty swift. Did you see a pangolin? That's what no, I was we did not about to ask her. Uh, no, that's a tortoise. About to ask Mom, a tortoise. for the pangolin. It looked and like a pangolin. I don't even know what a pangolin it's is. It's a tortoise. You oh. think it's like an armadillo, but it has a longer tail, and they're very endangered. In fact, they're protected where they'll have um, human guards with them. Yeah. Wow. A certain more again. Sometimes in Asia, they think it's an aphrodisiac and. You know, they need to discover Viagra. Leave the animals alone. Right. Right. <laughs> Another really they're cool thing. In, um, they're mostly seen in like Chobe along the uh, Zambezi. They're along there. Do you remember we were coming back from the um, show this picture? Because this is me with my iPhone. Yep. Right there. See, that's me shooting with the iPhone. <laughs> yes, it works. It works. Yeah. So we, has great we were pictures coming, and video. We were coming back from something. I can't remember where it was, but it was it was a uh, morning trip, and we were going down the road, and all of a sudden the, the guide slams the brakes on, and we're like, "What's going on?" He goes, "You got to check this out." It was a mama bird in the middle of the road. Oh yes, that was protecting her little baby, and the mama bird was seriously like maybe Flaring. ten inches. Oh flaring its wings like this at this big monstrous vehicle trying to get it to it stop. Did. It, stood, it, was, it would dance oh left, dance right, like, like so oh. It was, it was like, oh. wow, that was so cool. And we so just cool. hung out there and waited we, for... Yep, that was just... The little bird. But it did, it just stuck its wings up. We'll, we'll be driving to the next, wherever we're going, and he'll slam the brakes on again, and he'll be like, 
back up and he'll be like, see that? And he'll get out and it's a big snake and he'll tell us the story about mm-hmm. the snake and about Puffer snakes yeah. eating or somehow we saw a chameleon on a brand. Right. And he just stops and we get out. Yeah. And it's just amazing. They, they have the most amazing eyesight, those guides and drivers, because they do. They it's incredible. Eating. And I'm like, how did you see that? And he's like, oh, I just, I just see it. And here's a cerebral cat, you know, completely hidden in the grass. And 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 it sometimes it, it takes us different. a few moments to actually see it, you know. Yeah. So, well, you know, they all talk in Swahili to each other, so I'm ready to go. Okay, do <laughs> the chameleon. Yep, that's what one of our guests was saying. This girl Sue, we nicknamed her Sue Fari. She's like, "Come on, we're at Westworld." She's like, "Wait, we'll see something," and she'll be like, "No, cue the elephants." Cue right? the elephants. Because it was just because every time you turn around, <laughs> something's something. happening, and you're like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, did somebody cue hop. the elephants? Right. Like, how did that happen? Right. It's like Christmas all day long. It's Christmas all day long. It is. You're immersed in their world. And that's what's so different. And and you know, you're the guest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike, you will never go to the zoo again. (laughs) He he never likes to go to the Uh, zoo anyway. No, never go again. I have to be honest with you. Every time we picture a safari in Africa, I'm like, okay, we're going to like the zoo or something. But obviously, I mean, seeing these pictures is like, whoa. Oh, and the food and the hospitality. And yeah. But just the herds of animals. Oh, herds. You know, just the whole thing is like, I'm really excited. It's the this. real deal. I mean, yeah. it's sitting with your morning coffee and seeing animals just like right over there going to get a drink. You're like, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like when I, was in, when I was in the pool. Yes. In the, the whole. <laughs> now you're saying pool, like the pool, like the swimming, swimming pool? pool. A swimming <laughs> pool. I was in a swimming pool. Like David yeah. pointed out with one of the camps, like you. The swimming pool was right below where your coffee was. And then you see water in the distance there. Well, they're going about their business. Yeah. Oh, great. You sit in the pool and just watch the animals. No. No. (laughs) You got to get out on the vehicle. It's so fun. (laughs) The Mara doesn't have a swimming pool. You know, and you don't have to. You can stay back. You don't have to do morning. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's what I said, too. I said, oh, I'm not going to do the morning drive. And I was the first one in the kitchen, in the dining area every morning. (laughs) And I'm not a morning person at all. No. Hey, let me just put this out. Um, If you guys Uh, know somebody that might want to go, we only have one room left. Right. So, um, it can be a, a single or, you know, it, the rooms are. From yeah, we have two spots so left, meaning like a couple. We have a spot oh. left. Yep. People would have share the room. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you it. know Not somebody, um, you know, put them in touch with Bob and Don. And um, and this is a small group. It's a small, yeah. intimate group. We wanted it that way by design so mm-hmm. we could get to know everybody and have a great experience. It's not like we're going there. Mm-hmm. You know, with twenty five people, I, would, I know two people. Huh? It will be. Is it one person or accommodations? It's a, it's one a couple room or that would hold two people. One, oh, okay. one one spot that would hold two people. Like we we yeah. may know somebody. We actually might know somebody. Know if they can do it that quick, but we'll we'll ask we, them. And we if just, anybody's interested in exercise, I'm part of this group called F three, and they happen to have a chapter or a plant in Nairobi. So I'm gonna work out with them before we head out. <laughs> in Nairobi. They have a what? Oh That's he'll it. tell you. He'll bore you with the details. F3 is a free men's group for and it's just for men. So it's it's kind of cool. It's, it's free <laughs> and it's about fitness, <laughs> fellowship, and faith. And faith. Yeah. Not Christian faith, but you no, should be at just, that three. Yeah. Two in the morning for that. <laughs> like yeah, you had, he gets up at four fifteen. We have workouts are oh, at yeah. five, five fifteen. Yeah, Twenty five right? minute workouts for boot camp style. There's a group for women too, and I've never gone. But there is a chapter. <laughs> in, I was communicating with the guys. There is a chapter in Nairobi, and they're like, "Bring some shirts." They've got they've got only five members, but that's cool. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. Forward to that. Maybe. Yeah. Are they gonna come to the hotel and work out with you? I'll find out where they're at and we'll meet up, sure. Or, you know, there is a fence around city proper and the lions are there. Maybe we go outside the fence and we have to run from the lions. I don't know. (laughs) Just so you know that... My knees don't work that way anymore. Yeah, he still thinks he's 20. The (laughs) Sheraton? 
you know, it's fenced, so you can walk in the parking lot around it. It's fenced, but they have a beautiful gym, workout gym that overlooks the city park. Oh, so you wow. can see, you can be working out on the whatever, and you might see a giraffe or ostrich or <laughs> walking out in the across the way. So it's just over the street. I mean, it's like just the next house across the street. Wow. Love um, it. You can invite them to come there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's an experience of a lifetime for sure. And we usually, gonna, oh, yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, if you decide to share it with your friends, we've we've had that many many times where friends bring friends, and it's it's just it's more great. special. It, it is. It is. Yeah. And we're going to put together a Facebook Facebook group where everybody will send the link to it. So if you have any thoughts, any questions, what should I bring? Is this a good thing? Is that not, you know, mm -hmm. post it there and we'll keep the dialogue going. Uh, we'll do a few more Zooms. Anybody that might want to address anything about packing or mm -hmm. clothing or- as, as it gets closer things. to the trip, people will have more questions. Yep, for sure. for sure. But we'll make that accessible to everybody. And then I was when we get on Safari, um, we always like everybody to add WhatsApp to their cell phones because mm -hmm. that is our only way of communicating with everybody once we're on Safari mm -hmm. because everybody doesn't have the same cell right. link and we can't get cell service and so forth. But WhatsApp works through Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah, has I got that right. so, and that's an easy way to communicate back home as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So connect your WhatsApp with your family back home, your friends, whatever. And then okay. once you're back in the tent, it, but it's easy for us in case we need to say, oh, there's something happening and we need to leave 30 minutes early, you know, mm -hmm. or someone wakes up that morning and they don't feel well. You don't have to get out and walk to the tent. You can just WhatsApp. You, yeah. Walk. You can WhatsApp and say, I'm not coming today. Stay. Don't wait for me. Yeah. yeah I'm staying okay. back. You yeah. know, what was your question, Yvonne? Oh, I um you and you were talking earlier about the VIP service mm -hmm. at the airport. Um how the, do you go ahead we do we tip them then? I mean, is there that standard procedure to tip them? Uh no? you won't need to tip them. They're just uh just look for your name on the on the the plaque. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I I did the um I included the tipping on the invoice so um That'll cover it. Yep. So See, they're all part, that's all part of it. Okay. Yes. All the tipping is included on the invoice. You don't have to worry about tipping anymore. You can, if you want to bring, we talked on our last Zoom about bringing uh, shillings. If you're going to bring, if you have, you should bring some shillings just in case you're at a place that doesn't take credit cards and U.S. cash. So um, the recommendation is to bring, a, you know, it depends on how much you like to shop. I'm not a big shopper, so I'll probably bring a couple hundred dollars in shillings just so that I can have it if I need it. But I'm not American dollars in shillings, right? Or yes, yeah, so I would go to the bank. We'll go to the bank probably in August, uh, beginning mm -hmm. of August. And you have to request it. You have to submit a request. Yep. Um, we found it more favorable than trying to find an exchange rate in the hotel or yep. at the airport. Yeah. Go to your bank. Know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, go and it'll take them a couple make days sure, to get it. Make in. sure you get it in small bills in case you want to tip. Like um, 100 shillings. Is it 100 or 200 shillings? 200, is a dollar, like a dollar 200 50. shillings is a dollar fifty, approximately. Correct. Correct. So if you want to tip the people that bring your bag to your room, you know, you can give them 200 shillings and that the, they would love it. You know what I mean? Okay. It's easier for the locals <laughs> as well, especially when we get out into, we'll call it the bush. If you give them shillings, because who knows when they're going to leave that area to, to go, go and exchange, exchange dollars. Right. Gotcha. And, okay. In the, the $200 tip that is on the invoice, that really is for like the drivers and the cooks and all that. Okay. Yeah. All the big people, you know. Yes. Yes. Dora, who will be, uh, you'll meet her. Um, she collects these. Oh, dolls. I love those. Dolls. I collect those too. Um, yeah. Oh, so you're talking about is... the, oh, the doll. I mean the bracelets. I like the bracelet. And then I always go for the artwork. And then so this is a piece that I oh, oh that's cool. I like that. And you right. will meet this artist at the Karen Blixen Museum. He will wow. be 
Oh, you wow. David, right? When they're there? Yeah. yeah. So Joseph is his name. Joseph. He's amazing. Jo Joseph? Yes. Regina. And, and you can use, probably at the museum, you can use your credit card. We have a credit card that we don't get charged any international fees uh, yes. using it internet abroad. No exchange. Every camp, exchange rate hotel, every camp hotel, you can, you know, if you want to have a glass of wine or, or a beverage or something that's not covered underneath your meals, all of that. And they have uh, curio shops and stuff also, maybe, you know, with the camp logo on it or the name, you can charge those at the hotel. The room, yeah. Get to oh, the room. Good. Okay. And you'll Instead pay for right all here. that app when, right before we check out, you know, we're like, okay. Any incidentals, missing. you'll have to check out, you'll pay at the end, of, you know, just yeah. like a hotel here. Yeah. Okay. Like here. Yeah. Just You're going to pay for the incidentals, Bob? Hmm. What did you say, Malcolm? We're going to pay for the incidentals. <laughs> it depends on those incidentals. <laughs> okay, so we're coming in a day early. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Day early. So do you suggest staying at the same hotel or should we try a different hotel just to try no, it out? Or? Stay at Four Points. Yeah, why would you want to pack hotel? up and move? Four Points. Okay. Four yeah. I just don't want to move. Yeah. It's beautiful. We're doing a lot of moving, so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Four, four point. I mean, I don't know why anybody would want to stay somewhere else other than there. It's really they like the Ritz Carlton. Oh, really nice hotel. Yeah, I suppose you could do the Ritz, but it's, it's really nice. nice. Yeah, no, we'll say. No, that. I was thinking like some little. Uh, what do you call it? Um, we'll keep it or or you could have fun. I'm not going with that. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> After that long flight, I'm in foot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, 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 again. <laughs> so you get in on the 22nd. What time does your flight arrive on the 22nd? I can't remember. I think yeah. it's either five or eleven. I can't remember. Okay. okay. You'll yeah. probably want to go to your better, room and, and sleep, get something to eat and sleep, and then wake yeah. up and do the tour the next day. Yes, yes, that's what I mean. Yeah, we'll just do that. Yeah. Try to push it. So yeah. So we're coming yeah. in on the twenty first so that we could go to Sheldrick's on the twenty second and then do the pre tour on the twenty third. Gotcha. Okay. So I want to bottle feed the baby all I want to bottle feed the babies. Oh, Bob and Don, if you have nothing else for me, I'm going to. Yes, David, thank you so much. Thank you so much, so David. To see you guys again. Thank if you. you guys have any other questions, we're happy to discuss it. If not, thank you everybody so much for your time mm -hmm. and for coming on this adventure with us. Thank you, guys. Thank camera, you. I have some camera questions for you, Yeah, Bob. for sure. Shoot away. You know, Bye, David. Bye, Sharon. Bye, Sharon. Bye, Sharon. Bye, I, I can't wait to see you guys. Okay. I can't wait to meet Thank you. Thank you so person. much for your help. Welcome. Bye-bye. 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 What's your questions? And, so and if I could be on, if you want to take off too, you're more than welcome. Yeah, we're going to. We're okay. Gonna have, our daughter just got in the house, so we're going to go see her now. Okay. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you guys. so much. Good evening. Good nice good evening nice to see you. Nice, nice to meet evening. you too. Okay. When you're shooting those images there of the cheetahs and so forth that are running, what was your shutter speed? What were you trying to keep that? Malcolm, I'm going to take off. Yes, you may. You have a great <laughs> Say time. Hi to Thank Kathy. you so much. I Thank will. You. Yes, it's it's a 3200 of a second. Okay. I knew it was up there, but it, because the hair was so fine, and I knew that, you know, when I was doing the cattle photography, that you, it really you had to get cranked up, and um, to try to try to keep it sharp. And I figured that that was one of the items on it. Yeah, so, and and again, the guides are really good at letting us know, like, okay, did you see his head perk up? Did you see they're turning this way? They're getting ready, you know to pursue and they'll say there's impalas over that ridge and you'll see them stop before they burst into something like this. So it's, you know, not just out of the blue. Um, yes, this was 3,200th of a second and aperture five and it took ISO 3,200 to do it. So, but again, if you expose it, right, you know, there is just no noise at all. And it's incredible. Right. 
And you have to be careful. So this was with an older camera, 1DX Mark II. Right. Um, an R5 in the same scene, I would try and go faster. The only reason is, is the R5 resolves so much more detail than the older 1DX Mark II like this, that if there was any more vibration or imperfections, it would show where the smaller megapixel cameras, like the 1DX Mark II, you know, I think this was 16, 18, something like that. It's it's a little bit more forgiving than an R5. And it, the same kind of goes for the R3 because it's a stacked image sensor. Even though it doesn't have the size, it still resolves a lot of detail. So on some of that, would the um, seven be better? Uh, it be it would be helpful for the reach, you know, because when they burst out, this is this is a at least a fifty percent crop of the image, you know, because we he burst off from left side of the vehicle and then went running across the front of the vehicle, and our guide was so good, he goes, we're gonna you know stay a hundred yards back but we're going to follow him. And he did a great job doing it. So again, with the vehicle moving, you're trying to keep him in the frame and you're bouncing. So yeah, that fast shutter speed is essential. You know, and then, you know, things like at the watering hole, of course you could go for depth. Like this is aperture 10, you know, because I wanted this elephant right. and that elephant to be in focus and they're not moving fast the giraffes like don was describing at the watering hole they do move fast they'll jump and they're skittish and it takes them a few minutes to get comfortable so for those you know we were doing the giraffes drinking again i was up in a higher 2500 3200th of a second shutter speed because i knew they were going to flinch you know because you see it happening and the uh, the person, the guy that is in the hide will tell you that. Like, hey, when they approach, now the cameras have silent mode, but they didn't want us photographing them on their approach because they would never come to the hole because that clicking would make them skittish. And they didn't want us to actually start taking pictures until they were actually drinking. But again, now with mirrorless and silent mode, that's a huge advantage. Well, we don't need to get to Right. Now you get some of And when I was looking at pictures and I was going through and looking at things, I saw a bunch of photographers actually using something like a, the platypad on top of the bean bags to give it more, I guess, more support. On top of the bean bags, or uh, that's a personal thing, you know. Uh, bean bags to me are pretty solid. Maybe they were using it to give it a little bit more height, you know. Okay. If you're in the vehicle and it's down here, well, although again, now you have the articulated screen that can tilt out and you could look at it this way versus right. you know, scrunch down in the seat and look through the right. viewfinder, you know. So there's there's options now that we didn't have before. Right. So that's the only thing I could think of to use a platypod and then the ball head is to try and get it higher well, up. Yeah. Yeah, just, it looked like they were actually oh, the well they they were attached to the the platypod um just to give it more space there as far as a stable instead Index, of well, you know, a really stable and wide and they cradle the lens really nice okay so, the only thing i could think of is for the height okay and the night photography was the other question that mm -hmm. because we're going since we're going to be out there and yep it's unique you know yeah and, and, and don't be discouraged if you want to bring a tripod bring a tripod it's just something you have to carry you know what i mean right and you don't need it out during the day and you'll be able to do night photography right around the camp. That's what we've always done. Although a couple of times we made a group decision, meaning, hey, I want to do something cool. What do you suggest? 
And so I talked to our guides and we went outside the camp uh, at night because I wanted to get a baobab tree in the foreground and then the night sky around it. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you don't want to be hiking right. at night right. because so many predators, that's their time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we're not apex over there. No, no. <laughs> Even the elephants, like they said, they're dead silent when they walk, as big as they are. And, you know, you just don't want to spook elephants because they'll thrash you because they're very right. protective of their herd. Right. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. And, um, yeah, bring whatever, the, uh, like uh, Frank today was asking, should I bring a polarizer? Should I bring an ND? I'm like, Frank, I'm not bringing it. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't. If it's a concern or something you're thinking yes. about now, I'd rather you bring it and not use it than be there and say, damn it, I wish I would have had that polarizer filter. Okay. Same yeah, goes I, the tripod. There's doesn't take up any space, any extra space no. when it's on no. the lens. And, and when I've done the out. tripod, either you could put it in your luggage, um, you know, or you could strap it to your bag and roll it on with it. Never had any well, problems thinking, taking a tripod on. Yeah, what I'm thinking about is taking one of the gorilla pot, one of the gorilla tripods. Sure, does it work? Yeah, you know, and because that's going to handle. Any of the cam, any of the cameras, and any of the lenses that you're going to put for a night sky, right. right? You know that would handle it and still give you the ability to either put it on the ground and the tilt, or you know, yeah. attach it to yeah. a railing or a chair or something. Yeah. Like that. And the night sky is just so amazing that you know you want to have something that you could do a long exposure on, and it is so dark. So your you know your starting off point is. 3,200, 284 at, you know, 20 to 30 seconds. Right. Okay. Just trying to get all the gear. Yeah. Getting, wrapped around all the gear and getting it packed and trying to stay under underweight and looking at how all, all of that is going to flow together. So. Thankfully, but, uh, you know, the lenses, the R lenses have gotten lighter in weight. Right, but my R, well, not my R, the 600 version three I have is only five and a half pounds. My original 600 version one <laughs> was 14 pounds just for the lens. Oh, my goodness! So that's a huge difference in weight, right? Um, probably since you've added a couple of people, um, since we did that first one. Uh, talking about the not the shadow, what it the registering your equipment before it go, before you go overseas. Yeah, a, a carne a carne form. Yeah. It's just a precaution. It's some countries require it. Um, I just do it as a precaution because I have been stopped. Nairobi has grown up now. They're a tech hub. They're um, an international city. So it's it's not a big deal. But when I went into Uganda for a relief trip, a uh, right. humanitarian aid trip, there, you know, it's still very dicey. And the guards you can get, I mean, some see that amount of camera gear, and they're going to hassle you to give them money to let you bring your gear in. So if you have all your forms done, then that helps you a whole lot more. Well, when I was talking to when Canon emailed about, you know, allowing the loaner, the equipment loan, that was one of the things that I sent back to Kelly and Canon was, you know, is there going to be a loaner? Is there going to be paperwork showing serial numbers and all of that just so that you have the yeah, that, documentation? That's on the CPS form. That's there. And I would just list it as your own gear. Right. You know, right. and if you have camera insurance and it covers your gear internationally, usually there's a rental provision on there. And I would list it with them in case it gets stolen or detained or whatever, then you're covered. Right. 
because my my gear insurance has rental. So anything I rent, as long as I inform them and list it, it's covered. Right. right. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, it's mostly common sense. Like uh, we were having a discussion uh, when we did a safari in South Africa. There was an older gentleman who met us there from London. And, you know, you always tell people, keep your bags attached to you. And we're in the hotel. He felt very safe. He set his brief bag down at the, at the side of his right leg. And it had his passport, his medications, his visa, those things in it. And literally, just for a second, while he was filling out his registration card, boom, his bag was gone. And they saw the individual on, on um, surveillance. He went up to the counter at the hotel, pulled out a registration card, started filling it out, reached down, picked up his bag, and just walked out with it. So, but that can happen anywhere in any big city. And those are the oh, things yeah. I just want to have common sense about. If I set a bag on the floor like that, it zips shut, and my foot is through one of those straps. Yeah. Because when you're in a big tourist spot, big airports, anything like that, there's people looking for opportunity. Oh, yeah. So Never true. had anything happen outside in in country, we'll call it, in the bush. Right. Never anything there. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Let's let you go. Look forward to it. And, Say hi uh, to Kathy. Have a wonderful evening. And we will cut, catch up next time. All right. You take care. Have a blessed evening. You too, Malcolm. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye.